I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I suppose it's good. Are we good? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, I'm Nathan. I've been part of Dilinka Internationals for almost six years or so. Um, today we have Dan uh, Daniela Bono here to speak to us for La France Insoumise about the upcoming French elections, the first round of which will be taking place on April 10th, the second round on the 24th. Um, before the meeting, uh, Dilinka Internationals as a group decided on some questions we'd like to ask Danielle, and then afterward we'll put it to the audience to ask their questions. Um, and we'll see if we can get them all answered. <laughs> so, ready to start. <laughs> um, if you could explain a little bit about the state of the, la of the left in the upcoming elections, that the fragmentation on the left, is it perhaps too fragmented to make it to the second round? Um, some basic background for non-French activists would be helpful. Okay, so uh, maybe I'm gonna introduce myself first uh, for uh, people who may not know me, uh, and um, also about La France Insoumise. Thank you very much for inviting me and organizing this, um, uh, this, uh, this, this discussion about the, the situation in French in, uh, um, before the, the presidential election. Uh, I'm uh, Daniel Obono. I am a member of the uh, parliamentary group La France Insoumise at uh, the French National Assembly. I'm a first time uh, elected uh, MP. I've been involved in social movements and, and, and left politics for a long time now. And um, I'm a part of a, a 17 uh, member uh, strong opposition group. I, I can say, I think uh, most will agree, agree that it's the one, number one opposition group, if not in size, but in, 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 in content and, uh, and in, uh, in, in coherence. Uh, we, we've been opposing uh, Emmanuel's Macron majority for the past five years, and, and we also, I think, demonstrated that um, what activists, MPs can look like and sound like, and it was worth fighting for getting uh, as many as uh, us elected. I'm, I'm saying that because right after the, the presidential election, the, um, the legislative election are taking place in June, and usually when, um, because of the system in the French uh, institutions, the legislative election are uh, happening right after the presidential election. There's less talk about it, there's less participation in it, uh, and um, and usually the winner of the presidential election uh, has um, an open uh, an open road for having the big majority at the at the legislative election. But it's it's nonetheless a very um, a very important election too because um, despite the imbalance of power in France. Uh, which means that the presidential election holds most most power. Um, I think there's there's a need to to um, to reshape parliamentary politics in France. And uh, and and my experience for the past five years, although exhausting most time, um, also proved that uh, we could do this, and and we were even better than the majority. At, at, at doing it, so uh, so it's also part of the general uh, le political landscape in, in France. The past five years, we've been um, living under a right-wing government, despite what Emmanuel Macron pretended to be when he got elected. He got elected by default because he faced Marine Le Pen, the right, far-right candidate of the Le Pen dynasty. And um, and uh, he used to be, he was a member of the previous government in 2017 of the Socialist Party government. He was a very close, he was the uh, economy minister. Uh, so he, is, he was part of the system, uh, despite portraying himself of some kind of outsider, he was very inside. Um, and uh, and, it, and he, 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 it was a palace coup, I would say, uh, that he made. Uh, which um, helped him to to get uh, the the biggest media campaign uh, for his 
uh, candidacy uh, for uh, during the, the last election uh, election campaign, and 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 then when he he, he got to the second round round um, facing Marine Le Pen was like the easiest way to get elected. Uh, and most people voted for uh, not for him, but against, against her. It's important to remind this because now, five years later, not only uh, is Marine Le Pen again a candidate and uh, she uh, polls uh, second uh, in, in, um, in election uh, votes, uh, but there's a second far right candidate and, and like actual neo-fascist candidate, Eric Zemmour. Uh, we could talk about it later because he's a, he's a product of the ruling class uh, literally being you know, packaged uh, and shoved onto, uh, into the minds of the people through access to uh, a media channel which is dedicated to its candidacy. It's the same news channel, the equivalent of Fox News in the US, but actual, you know, Right wing and and uh, and he's been um, it's a it's a channel which belongs to uh, Bolloré Vincent Bolloré which uh, f uh, one of the biggest the, the wealthiest men in France uh, and who's owning more and more media and and controls a lot of media and and so this is the an actual I'm, I, I, and I think it's 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 never been seen in the French political. Uh, seen that you had an actual neo-fascist, I mean, Le, Le Pen, uh, the Le Pen family um, has been doing their you know, political business for, for quite some time, and we know where they come from, but it, I mean, they were, we knew who they were, and all of a sudden, uh, you got this neo-fascist candidate um, that is pushed by the media, and I, to me, it's, it shows one thing, and, and uh, but Another thing shouldn't be um, underestimated when we, we focus on how, what it means for French democracy to have those two candidates who polls second and third in, 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 in voting intentions, if, if that's a word, um, right after uh, Macron. Uh, it means that part of the ruling class has decided that they want right or far right um, political power to help them hold their hegemony on society because it's, it's, it's an actual political choice from the ruling class, uh, the French ruling class. Um, and you had the media doing the job of media and pushing them and, and, and portraying the next election as something that is already done, like it's Macron because you know, uh, if not Macron, it's chaos. It's 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 a far right, uh, and and so it's it's going to be Macron. That's that's the that's the the big um, the main political discourse. Uh, but uh, t to me, what shouldn't be uh, implied by that? It's like uh, the society and the French people are not Macronites or. Uh, neo-fascist society or neo-fascist pe people. Uh, on the contrary, we've, 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 we've had two of the biggest mass movements in French history, and it's a, it's a history with a lot of uh, social movements for a, long, for, for a long, long time. Um, the Yellow Vest movement, and then right after the movement against pension reform, um, which were all centered around progressive politics, social justice, uh, social protection. Uh, the majority of the population supported this movement despite the movement being demonized uh, by the press uh, and, and the establishment. So, so this is the state, I would say, um, to, 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 to summarize, this is a state of, a, of, a, of the people of the country uh, we could either turn hard right, because Macron is hard right, me, hard neoliberal, high, hard conservative, and even reactionary, uh, or far right. But who could also, because of you know, the, the, the rising inequalities, because of the 
anger of the people because of the, the multiple resistance, uh, working class resistance, working class fight, we could also turn a way better way, and that's the way we are trying to, to lead, to lead uh, right now with uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon. Thank you. Okay, so the second question we would ask then, because a lot of people here are familiar from years of news with Marine Le Pen and her kind of fascist family, um, or hard right family, but people here I would think know a little bit less about Eric Zemmour, who you mentioned a little bit. Um, what does uh, his place as a front runner right now in the election say about this, uh, the situation in France, and do you feel he's able to get away with saying certain things mm -hmm. as a firm, former journalist, perhaps, that even Marine Le Pen can't get away with saying? Hmm. Uh, Marine Le Pen got away with a lot of things because she got normalized by the system. Actually, I mean, half of the of the of these past five years have been um, uh, the transformation of Marine Le Pen into some respectable right wing politician, uh, and she was helped by it by the media and and we would you know um, push her as you know the the only alternative, but quite acceptable alternative. Uh, but at the same time, and, and, and the one who summarized it the best in the most honest way is uh, Gérald Darmanin, who is right now the Home Secretary, you would say, here. Um, he's an awful guy. I mean, a real awful guy. He got, he got nominated as at this being like uh, the, the, the cop boss uh, why it was under uh, a, a, a ju judiciary process uh, for uh, rape accusations, and he was supposed to be the man, you know, handling cops, uh, investigating him. Um, that's one of his uh, great deeds in in during those past five years. But so this Gérald Darmanin uh, once he, 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 he debated Marine Le Pen. Uh, maybe one year ago, and it was very it was very hard against her, uh, but not because of her being you know far right, but because she wasn't uh, hard enough against Islam, and he said you you a bit you are mollified or something like that, um, and that's that's I mean that was ve a very a uh, true uh, true statement because for them she got so normalized that she wasn't scary enough. So they needed something scarier. They actually needed it. Um, two years ago, uh, right before the, 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 the COVID outbreak, uh, Emmanuel Macron was speaking to, to member of his majority and saying that uh, he needed to uh, organize the political debate around right, right or uh, far right uh, issues because the, 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 the goal has always, had always been to, uh, to face Marine Le Pen or the far right. That was the only way uh, he, could, he, could, uh, he could win. So he actually said that, that we need to talk about immigration, we need to talk about Islam, we need to talk about, you know, um, poly, pol, um, uh, uh, security issues, because those are the topics where, you know, the far right will be... Uh, um, would be pushed forward, and 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 then it will be at ease uh, to represent, you know, a more moderate side uh, facing the far right. So that that had always been the goal. But Marine Le Pen being like mollified, on uh, especially on Islam, because that's a big uh, French obsession, uh, racist obsession. For it's been for years, but it it really reached. Um, uh, higher and higher, I think we're going to talk about it later, um, the dimension and, and scarier dimension over the past month. Anyway, so uh, from seemingly from out of hair uh, appears Eric Zemmour. Who is Eric Zemmour? He used to be, he's not a journalist per se, he's some kind of a, uh, an editorialist. How would you say? I mean, those people who spend their time on TV. Uh, commenting things, and he, he, I think what uh, made him um, somehow relevant at some point was because he, he, he used to read books, so he could cite quotes them 
And so he appeared to be some kind of intellectual. Um, no, really, I think, I think that's what people used to say when he was like some respectable, you know, uh, commentators, because he reads books, his story, and he quotes them, and so it sounds very clever, even though it's not. He, is, he was usually used as a right-wing guy, and you, you had some liberal guy, and it was supposed to be, you know, democracy, because you had, you know, all the reactionary stuff he used to say were counterbalanced, supposedly counterbalanced by the liberal politics anyway. So that's why how he, he, be, he, he, he gained some public um, uh, uh, visibility. And then um, he, he was supposedly on the you know, conservative right, and then he, 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 he really drifted to the far right. Uh, up until the moment, he actually you know, openly supported Marine Le Pen and, and the far right. And then I think he thought himself to be the one who would, you know, uh, the one true spokesperson of, 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 of this political family, seeing that Marine Le Pen was too soft uh, and, uh, and he was, uh, he's been financed and, 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 uh, and, um, and given a platform, a TV platform on this channel on this, uh, on this media, uh, CNews, the CNews media, owned by Vincent Bolloré, which is one of the wealthiest uh, men and family in, in France. And he, was, he, he, uh, he had like seven days a week, an hour, uh, where he could say whatever he wanted because, you know, free press or whatever it is, you know, freedom of speech, supposedly. Uh, he's been con condemned, nevertheless, despite the, 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 the very liberal you know, understanding of freedom of, of, of speech. He's been condemned three times for uh, eight speech, eight speech. Uh, and is, is, a, is a, an openly and, you know, a, a, a convicted uh, a racist. Despite that, um, he was given, yeah, uh, free reign to, to spew his hateful comments about everybody, everybody coming from migrants, LGBT uh, women, and all those things. So, and then one day he decided he wanted to be a, a candidate. And then one day out of nowhere, uh, a newspaper decided to poll him even though there was no reason why he should have been polled, because he wasn't a political uh, uh, member of any party. He supported some, but he wasn't uh, a politician. But they decided, and then they started to poll him, and poll him very high. And then that's what made his, his, his campaign. So to me, it's very much um, the, the illustration of the, the radicalization of some part of the French ruling class and the French media uh, who think that they need to, the only way they can um, maintain their power over a, a very uh, a precarious neoliberal hierarchy and, and, and domination, precarious because of the economic crisis, because of uh, everything that has been happening over the past years and the inequalities and people resisting and all that stuff was to 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 clamp down on 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 on, on trade unions uh, and uh, demonize all the uh, women uh, working class LGBT and anti-racist movement uh, that they deem um, and we want to talk about it. Um, anti-republican and uh, and then have some 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 far right power to 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 be able to do that so so that what it is 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 a neo fascist i mean is 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 literally a, a neo fascist uh built up by by the system uh or some some part of the system as an alternative to to macron or le pen if needed if they deem it necessary to, uh, to, to go that right in order to maintain their, their political order, economic order. Bleak, okay. So <laughs> the third question then is um, how activities like the Yellow Vest movement, Les Gilets Jaunes, um, 
have been able to, have these activities been able to increase the vote for the left in France? Why or why not? What have some of the challenges been? Uh, yeah. Um, no, I would, for, for now, there's been no political translation of the, 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 the Yellow Vest movement or the uh, anti-pension movement, which, are, as I said, have been one of the biggest social movements uh, we've, we, we've seen in, in, in France history. Um, I think it's very tricky because there is this, yeah, there is on every level, uh, because of rising inequality, rising poverty, and also uh, people seeing that not everybody suffered the same way during the COVID. Uh, you have this Oxfam report that showed that uh, billionaires got even richer during the, the, the past 19 months than they've been uh, over the past decade. And, and in France, five billionaires owns uh, more than 40% of the, of, the, of the poorest people in the country. Um, so, uh, and I think also the impact of the, those movements, I, I, I was talking about the Yellow Vest movement and the anti-pension reform happened like a year and a few months before the COVID outbreak. And I think what happened, um, and I'm sure it, it happened also here and, and in every Western countries, um, especially there was, there was this trauma about realizing how precarious our social system were, uh, how essential health workers and, and public servants were uh, in order for us to function as a society. And I think it, it, it really, um, showed in, in many ways how people realized uh, the failure of the neoliberal system. So I think it, it's, it's also part of, of uh, the, I would say, collective mental space with the, um, what the, the, the Yellow Vest movement brought onto the, onto the political scene and the media scene, those you know, ordinary uh, French people um, that didn't look like the usual uh, social movement protester because they were from um, not from urban centers, not uh, into trade union. They were, you know, uh, old pensioners. They were um, they were uh, unemployed people living in uh, in remote areas. Uh, so it was really the. You say you the deep country. The, the I, I don't know how you would describe it, and uh, and they showed the you know inequalities, territorial inequalities, lack of public services, and and very strong and powerful thing that everybody related to. That was a very powerful moment. Also, that shook uh, Macron's uh, government and Macron's rule to the core because at some point we missed the conjunction between this movement and the traditional trade union movement and social movement, and if it had happened, and it could have happened uh, back in um, 2019, uh, um, the end of 2019, and during that, 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 that winter uh, of discontent, and, but it, we missed this, and, and, and so Macron survived. Uh, to to the, the next two years, but it really shook to the core, and then you had the anti pension reforms, and in between there were two two election rounds: the European election and then the regional and um, and and local elections, which there were two stri two main things that, since it happened right in the middle of the COVID crisis, I think it also impacted. Uh, the abstention rate that was very uh, high. And, uh, and also, when you think about the European election, it's a very tricky one because um, it's not really at the center of people's mind, like what is, you know, the, 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 the debate usually are very uh, black and white. You are pro-Europe or you are anti-Europe, and, 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 but... I, I must say that I think we failed to really represent, you know, the alternative to to the, the mainstream, you know, pro-Euro uh, candidates like Macron and um, 
and the anti-system vote also, uh, because I wouldn't say it's anti-Europe, it's more anti-system vote. Uh, so I think we, we made mi mi mistake in our, uh, in our narrative and, and what, we, what, what we wanted. Uh, so we, we didn't manage to, to translate this, um, this uh, uh, anti-systemic uh, vote onto our, onto our platform. And, um, but despite that, I think it's, those have been uh, very political movements. And because the presidential election holds such importance in France, this is the moment people feel actual, actually feel that it matters to vote, uh, despite declining um, voting uh, percentage in France, like in a lot of countries, which tells a lot about the crisis of democracy or Western democracy in many ways. But despite that, the one election where people actually go uh, in, in throws in, 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 in good numbers, go to vote, is the presidential elections. And what we've been campaigning for is for um, them to see our our program and our candidate, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, is the one uh, that, that is um, in, a, in an absolute uh, opposition to what has been done over the past five years, but even before, uh, because th there's a continuity between polit po the, the political uh, scene, whether it's a socialist party or a Macron or uh, the, the right-wing uh, uh, party and and we have to yeah that's 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 been what we've been doing trying to 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 convince people that it is it is possible to to change uh, life by changing politics and um, I think that now we are pulling fourth uh, Jean Luc Mélenchon is is fourth in fourth or fifth we've just in recent two recent polls show that we we, we are now fourth before the LR, Les Républicains, which is the right wing, the traditional right wing party candidates. Uh, and, and so it's obvious, and I, I think we, 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 Jean-Luc Mélenchon candidacy is around 10%, 10, 11, 12%, um, despite a lot of over Socialist Party, uh, uh, Green Party, and Communist Party candidates. Uh, but we, we are the one uh, towards which, I mean, a lot of people are now looking for if we want to beat the right and the far right. We, it's, we are obviously the only alternative to, to, to their world and to, to, the, to the arm and destruction that uh, Macron or worse, Le Pen, Zemmour could bring on if they got elected. And I think that what the vote for Jean-Luc Mélenchon actually means and, 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 and symbolize and hopefully more and more people are, are realizing it right now and, and will you know, uh, choose to get up and go vote uh, next, next, um, next April. Okay, and then the last question that the group has for you before we open it up to questions from everyone is that um, we wanna come back to the question of Islamophobia and what role this has played mm -hmm. in the French election. It seems like anyone left of center now is called an islamo mm -hmm. you know, um, Do you have anything to say about that and what the La France Insoumise is doing to counter that? Well, I mean, it's been, it's been, it's been happening for years now, well, obviously for decades and, and without uh, going back to colonial and 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 post-colonial uh, France and its 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 imperialist history, um, I would say um, there is the Islamophobia has been has been playing a, a a vital role for the right and the far right, but also um, part of uh, the so-called left and people who call them some left, but um, especially since uh, the, the, the terrorist attacks uh, that happened in France were very uh, uh, horrific acts and, uh, and that traumatized, I mean, everybody. And, and, and fortunately, it, it was used. Uh, it was uh, used in order for people who already you know, were targeting Muslims um, 
to 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 do it even even more. Um, one of the first bill we discussed when we got elected was one uh, the anti-terrorist law. One of the numerous uh, anti-terrorist laws that've been every every year and a half uh, there've been a, a, an anti anti-terrorist. Uh, bill that is discussed and voted at National Assembly for the past 20 years now. It's like they don't even have time to implement it, and they're already uh, drafting another one, which is which is absolutely irrational. And it's not it's not we need we need to prevent terrorist attack. We need to fight against it, but that's not the way to do that. And that's what we've been arguing. But that the, one of the first acts of this Macron was. Uh, another anti-terrorist law that actually put into the regular law, I would say com common law, the state of emergency that had been uh, uh, decided after the terrorist attacks. And so that all the extraordinary powers um, that were designed for a specific moment, a specific time, uh, have been normalized into, and, 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 and of course it was opposed by all the human rights organization locally nationally and internationally and we opposed it but to me it's it's it it, it shows um, it was already a sign of the the very authoritarist authoritaristic nature or I would say hill liberal nature of the macron regime um, and 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 those during the same I mean 2017 they also started to discuss the anti-migration law um, and uh, and especially on the anti-terrorist law, there have been specific. Um, it's not even dog whistle because it was actually targeting you know Muslim people and you know all the association between Muslim people and and Islamists and Islamists and terrorists and you know. So uh, that set the tone of of the of the of the the, the politics and then. Fast forward five years, and you got the uh, another another bill that was vo voted, uh, which was supposed to how did they call it again? Um, to withstand the Republican principles, uh, the law against separatism, uh, which, I mean. Even Macron himself said it was targeting Islam because it was a way to uh, to to. I would say um, uh, scapegoat Muslim people as separatists. It, it it was supposed to 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 be a response after the horrific um, assassination of um, Samuel Paty, um, um, a high school teacher, uh, and uh, and right after that, the government decided, hey, you know, we need another uh, anti-terrorist law, and this time, you know. Uh, targeting clearly targeting you know Muslim parties uh, and uh, and also targeting um, civil liberties because not just us with all those those uh, racist or xenophobic attack it's not just the the a group of people Muslim or migrants who who suffer of this they are the first to be attacked and they are the first one to suffer but it means a regression for every everyone. At the end, and that's very what we saw with the the anti-separatism bill. Uh, so to me, those are the the two moments, as a you know, from from where I have been fighting against those th these governments, uh, and it shows how the Macron regime actually um, inherited this Islamophobic trends and and multiply it uh, tenfold. Uh, and mixed it with what we've seen happening in in the United States of okay, A, for instance, war. I mean, cultural cultural war by you know conservatives and like uh, those people, the anti woke discourse and weaponizing identity politics against uh, against um, oppressed groups, and that's what was directly imported from the U.S. in France, and they've been. Um, and the media and the pundits on TV have been, you know, discovering Islamo leftism, uh, and now it's wokeism, and 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 you know, like anti-white racism and all 
all that conservative and reactionary discourse, it's not, the thing is, what was significant was, it wasn't, wasn't only the media uh, or the right wing of the far right uh, who was very um, vocal about, about, uh, about that, but the government itself, to example, the, um, the higher education, uh, yeah, higher education, the university uh, uh, minister, Dominique Vidal, uh, has actually launched a winch hunt inside the academy targeting uh, Islamo-leftism, uh, me meaning social sciences, uh, because that we do, there, there was actually no no, no, no justification. Just saying that there is Islamo leftism, uh, meaning you know, intersectional study. The very uh, few and full of people working on gender, working on race, and and knowing a bit about academy, it's so difficult uh, to to do researches in general, especially in social sciences, especially on those topics. I mean, like there's uh, a very small number of people who actually can do those researches, but they were, you know, uh, portrayed as this, I don't know, fifth column, you know, uh, in the academy against, you know, republicanism or laicity or whatever, but it's coming from the very minister whose role is supposed to protect academy uh, liberties, academy freedom, that's written as her, you know, her, her, her role, her responsibility, uh, and she was the one on TV several times saying that we have to, 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 to target them and to crush them. And, and, and our, count, our counterpart in the education minister, uh, Jean-Michel Blanquer, also was very vocal about it and, 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 and targeting uh, activists and, 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 uh, and uh, social scientists. And, 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 and so it was coming directly from them, from the, the top. Uh, also, of course, Mr. Macron, who famously said after the uh, June 2019, was pre-COVID, um, there have been, uh, I think, I was here also, there have been massive anti-police brutality movement echoing what was happening with the George Floyd uh, movement in the US, justice for George Floyd, and especially in France, there have been a a grassroots movement against police brutality around the case of uh, Adama Traoré, a young black guy who'd been killed by the police and, uh, and over black and, 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 and Arab young French people um, being killed in, 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 in problematic uh, circumstances. So they've been those, in June especially of that year, uh, they've been big demonstration, very impressive, very inspiring, very young people um, asking for justice and for equality. And a couple of weeks later, Emmanuel Macron commented those demonstrations saying that those young people were um, uh, uh, straying away or uh, they were influenced by uh, teachers in the university and social sciences. He actually said that. Uh, a very uh, a reactionary statement and very very um, anti-intellectualist statement. So yeah, that that stays out, out. And I think I'm gonna end with that. I think that's what Emmanuel Macron has been doing. Is he was is he's been building a social basis because, as I said, he got elected by default. He had no social basis for his electoral victory. So uh, he had the discourse about neither left nor right, which means he was on the right, but disguising himself as a leftist and you know, using some social, some liberal you know, languages. But from a very start, as I said, whether on the economic uh, level with the anti-law, uh, uh, anti-labor law uh, legislation that he impl implemented, uh, the anti-terrorist uh, security law he implemented. It was, you know, a right wing from the start. Uh, so he decided to go with this and, 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 and openly building the right wing, hard right wing electoral basis and social basis around, around him and, 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 and challenging the official traditional right wing party as 
the main spokesperson of, 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 this, of this side of the society. So that's what he's been doing, and I think racism, as always, and reactionary uh, rhetorics was the, 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 uh, the ingredient that could, you know, that could help put together this mix, mismatch of, you know, uh, people he, he, he put together, and, and, um, and that's, that's the, 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 the agenda he's been implementing over the past five years, and I think that's why uh, the political discourse in France has been so obsessed and, 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 and focusing on, you know, uh, Islam and, 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 and migrants and, and, and young women wearing the job and stuff like that. And I think it's, it's, it's deeply racist and, and sexist also and xenophobic, but it serves a point, I mean, a political agenda. Okay, yeah, it seems really important to recognize that the attacks on the academy and wokeness in the academy aren't just coming from the far-right candidates, mm. but also from the right-wing uh, mm. president currently of the country. We're gonna open it up now to questions. I have a few written down, but I was hoping maybe we could let someone else speak for a minute. Does anyone have something they would like to ask Danielle? Hmm. Well, um, I think that was that was um, a very sad story, actually, and 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 um, sometimes infuriating because, as I was telling, the Emmanuel Macron come came from the Socialist Party. He was from the from there, and I think he represents. And what we've seen, all these reactionary tendencies and trends inside his government mm -hmm. are also coming from the Socialist Party. The, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the before anti-war and anti-Islamo-leftist uh, anti discourses, they were inside the Socialist Party, this, um, this think tank and, and this, this uh, tendency, these currents that were saying that um, we shouldn't focus on, on women, mi migrants, and stuff like that. You already had that inside the Socialist Party. And after five years uh, of Hollande, because the previous government and majority, and they got the government, the majority, and they had all the power, all the level of power, uh, and they failed miserably to... Um, to, 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 to give what they promised on the, the people who voted for uh, François Hollande. They did the, the, the opposite of what, what people actually uh, on the left and, 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 and working lot people expected them to do when they voted for Hollande. So there was this big disappointment and, and especially when Macron managed his palace coup, I would say, and, 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 and got on board a part of the of the Socialist Party, I think it really delegitimized completely de de delegitimized this the Socialist Party, and I think they are just part of the, uh, the 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 direction in the Socialist Party is just neoliberal. I mean, they are they are neoliberal, so uh, it's very it was very difficult for them to oppose some of the anti-social uh, reforms done by Macron because they started it. I mean, right in 2016. The El Khomri uh, reform against the the, the labor law uh, was the beginning. Was a, a two part actually uh, reform, and the second part was implemented by Macron right uh, when he got elected. So they didn't oppose him on this, or were very. Uh, uh, it was very awkward for them to oppose them, and even the way Macron, because that's one dimension I, I didn't. I didn't. Um, uh, point uh, before is the uh, high, high level of police repression of social movement, mm -hmm. and and uh, that that really uh, uh, was unseen. And the first instance of 
of such level of repression was in 2016, actually under the Socialist Party government, the, the El Khomri reform, and the, there were massive, massive demonstration against this reform, and there was a massive police repression of this movement. So on that level also, they couldn't really oppose because people uh, uh, reminded them that they started it. They started the whole thing. So uh, I think that's what, what happened. And, and they, I mean, for the past five years in, in, in the parliament, what I witnessed, and, and I was, it's not just to say because we are, there were 16 of us and we were like the, 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 the only real opposition to the government. And, and, and I, I don't take pride in us being only 6, 17 to actually oppose uh, as a whole uh, Macron. I would have liked the Socialist Party group they are twice our number. Uh, I would have liked them to, I mean, I wouldn't say they didn't oppose the government. They did some, some, some on, on some text, but they were like so feeble. I mean, they, uh, it, it was really a shameful. And, 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 and at some point we were like, but where are they? And we, we and I think the reason why they, they weren't there because there was no political, actual political di direction and they were lost because, because they couldn't oppose Macron and they agreed with what, uh, on social issue, on the economic issue about the European EU, Union, they agreed with them. I think that was happened to the Socialist Party. And, and what it's, it's also ne negatively impacted us as a whole, you know, the left side, the progressive side, because it also paralyzed a lot of social movements, a lot of trade unions, a lot of, because of the history and the, the, the connection between politics and, and, and social movements, it means that they had been in power for five years, they, had, they have a lot of uh, networks within social movements, and them being so feeble, so, so weak, also weakened us. Um, and I think that's also why the, the, the Yellow Vest movement came out of nowhere, because, because we, we had lost touch with a lot of, uh, of those areas um, because there was not a lot of trade union and, 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 and also because the, 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 the left has been weak on, on, on many issues. So I that's what I would say about the Socialist Party and now, especially when you, you get the, the, the candidates, mm -hmm. which polls at 2%, 2%, 3%, mm -hmm. and which who spends most of her time, she's the Paris mayor, and she spends most of her time attacking us, uh, attacking Jean-Luc Mélenchon, uh, and she, yeah, she basically is useless uh, for, the, for the progressive side, but very useful for Macron and for the right wing, actually. Um, and, uh, and for the Communist Party, I would say also, I think that they're, we used to, I mean, in, in the parliament, we actually worked very well with some of the, some of the Communist Party comrades. And, uh, and most, most, most of the time, we have like, I would say 90% of, of time we vote the same way. So there was a very uh, good collaboration between our groups. I think the problem is about strategy, actually. And it, it, it was the reason why uh, La France Insoumise uh, was created in back in 2017 was after a split. I mean, we we in in ten ten years ago in 2012 we we found that this this platform with the Communist Party, the Left Front at the time, and that split um, uh, during the Hollande. Uh, uh, no, it was not Hollande at the time, but. Yes, it was Hollande. Yes, it was Hollande, actually, uh, because we have a, 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 a strategical difference with the way we related with the Socialist Party, and because they have a lot of local elected officials on the local levels, uh, thanks to alliance with the Socialist Party, and they've never really broke with you know the Socialist Party. I think that's one of the main strategical differences that led to the the split of the Left Front. Uh, and then we, st we started with the La France Insoumise as a platform outside of parties because also we, 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 we realized it, it's, we're not against parties, but it was more an impediment than a, a, a helpful 
in, in what we thought was needed to, to re-engage people in politics and stuff. So, so I think there's this, there was, there's been these strategical differences and now they got the candidate that decided to, um, to, to surf on the reactionary discourses, part of the reactionary discourses because he's been like um, openly uh, targeting the, the green, you know, uh, the green and us and saying like he, like, he likes to eat meat and like, okay. So what? And it's, it's been his main uh, media talking point about uh, uh, loving nuclear plants and stuff like that. So he's openly riding, you know, the reactionary discourse because it's a way to 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 exist. And it's it's a very I think it's a very sectarian take because since the Communist Party su supported Jean Luc Mélenchon back in 2017, and we did a great job because we we got like 90% of the votes. Mm -hmm. Uh, at the first round, and 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 we were like very close to being on the second round, mm -hmm. but since then they felt like they were disappearing, and they need you know it's a very identitarian uh, and sectarian uh, attitude. But we keep saying that there's a lot of communist party members that actually support us and join us, and we keep having this position saying that we got like 99% of agreements. So uh, we're open to discuss, if you want us to, to discuss about the nuclear you know, uh, plant stuff, and we could discuss it, uh, and we keep an open, you know, open, open arms policy toward them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically that. And of course, if you talk about the progressive side, you, you could talk about the Green, uh, OLV, the Green Party. Uh, who's been doing good, I mean, I suppose, like, uh, with, you know, climate change discourse and the awareness of that, I think they benefited from that a lot. But they're a bit sectarian also, and part of the leadership, especially uh, the, the candidate from the Greek party, is is a neoliberal also. I mean, it's somebody who believes in, in free market and, and believes that you can, you know, green, green capitalism, or something like that, basically, I mean, it's a bit... You could you could go and read about what he does, but he's a European m member of the Parliament and um, and more like uh, yeah neoliberal green, actually. So that's that's uh, the main difference with 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 him. Uh, but also we have been working with a lot of uh, uh, green party activists, and and we keep saying that actually we were the only green party. In Parliament, we were the Green Party in the Parliament because because the former it's 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 a bit telling about the Green Party because uh, all their former um, uh, MPs joined Macron, <laughs> which yeah I mean which and and the and for for a part of the of the of the of the five years mandate the 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 president of the National Assembly was a former Green party member uh, who joined Macron. So I think it's very telling about their, you know, the very uh, uh, capitalism friendly and the old liberal friendly uh, uh, line of some of them. Okay, um, are there any other questions? I see one in the back there and then look over there. Uh, is based on the father, Jean-Marie Le Pen, uh, 
Mm. So that's where I eat because Yeah, I think it's it's a it's a very good thing because usually you you wouldn't associate um, Western Europe politics with corruption. It's more like you know it maybe it's in Europe and African and you know, but I think it's very it's very right to point that out. We have um, uh, it was first it was a government of lobbyists. They were like all former. Um, um, the prime minister of the first uh, three years, prime minister uh, Edouard Philippe used to work for Arena, um, Arena uh, Areva, which was which is the, the big uh, uh, nuclear plants, you know, uh, company, um, and and. Um, uh, the, the first batch of, of, of minister uh, were indict, indicted into in judi judicial process for you know uh, shady dealings or anything. So, and uh, and they were yeah they're all lobbyists and they like the government itself and there were a lot of a lot of uh, uh, affair you know uh, with color and stuff like that. So it's it's very. Uh, right to say that and it's part also of the uh, popular anger you know in, in within the yellow vest movement there's this you know um a, a big drive against you know corrupted officials and to that that's that's something very deep i think what symbolizes it most uh, even it's not yeah he has financial shady financial deals too uh but what symbolizes it it was right at the um, mid-term was the Benalla affair. Uh, maybe you've heard about it. It's it's a case of a uh, close associate of the president. He was bo his bodyguards, and also he, he, he worked for a parallel security system that Macron wanted to implement. Uh, and he was um, caught on camera, uh, disguised as a police officer, because he, 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 he had a, a police police sign on his arm and beating protesters. Well, I mean, they weren't protesters, actually. <laughs> they were young people, you know, in, in, the, in the fifth uh, arrondissement in a very, you know, um, Place de la Contrescarpe. If people know Paris, it's very, like, yeah, young students. And uh, uh, they were, you know, spending after, after the most time in, and, and uh, enjoying their time. And they got uh, repressed by the police. And this guy got caught. And uh, it became a big scandal because people realized who he was. I mean, some 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 footages started to circulate, and some uh, I think maybe they got tips, and and the media started to talk talk about it. So it was a big thing, and it it was very also um, uh, it it actually uh, prevented the constitutional reform that was debated at the time to be voted. It stopped. Uh, altogether, the, the big process, and it appeared that this Benalla guy had shady dealings uh, with a lot of, you know, actually Russian oligarchs, <laughs> uh, uh, and 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 was a very shady guy, very close to the government, very very close to Macron, and Macron actually uh, covered for him uh, for for a long time, um, and and. Um, and and one of the famous thing that Macron said, which also triggered, I think, part of the Yellow Vest movement, is is when we were like people were asking, and the government, and the and the the parliament, and the opposition in parliament were asking you, you know, for answers about what 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 the deal is. He famously said, uh, "Let them get me, come get come and get me, qu'ils viennent me chercher," uh, knowing that per the law is. Uh, unimpeachable, actually, and it's, it's like he has no legal responsibility as a president, which is which is 
may be a shame, but anyway. And this is the, that was part of the rallying cry of the Yellow Vest movement. And they said, we're coming to get you, you know, in the demo. It's, so you, it's, it's very, it's, it's a very uh, um, important symbolically, but also uh, in the buildup of the Yellow Vest movement, when you, maybe you have seen those images of, of Yellow Vest demonstration, raiding the Champs Elysees, and they were there because they wanted to go get him. Uh, at at the uh, Elysee Palace, uh, which is at the end of the of the Champs Elysees, so it's I mean it, this this theme about you know democracy, about about transparency, about anti-corruption is it, I think it's very deep inside the the the, the discontent and the and the demands of the people. And one of the things we've been talking about, I mean, we have I would summarize our platform around three axes. First is social emergency. And, 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 remi and remedy social emergency with immediate measures, and uh, uh, we could talk about this. The second one is, is uh, environmental or ecological uh, bifurcation. I don't know who, who you, I mean, yeah, addressing the climate crisis and, 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 and changing the entire system in order to follow the green rule, which is we can't take from the earth more than it can reproduce. It's, it's, we want it to be constitutional and, to, and, uh, and for us to organize our entire political and social and economic system around the idea that we have to build a resilient and sustainable and, uh, 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 society in order to adapt to climate change, which is underway. So that's one of the, the second axes. And the third one is about democratic refoundation and the core idea is to start a constitutional process to 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 like like what is happening actually in Chile right now and and um, uh, a constitutional assembly where we could as a people get together again and decided what are the core values what are the principles we want our society to organize around uh, we want to change and 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 then and then the, we want to finish with the Fifth Republic, which we say is uh, we've, we label as a presidential monarchy because of, uh, I, I, I said earlier, the imbalance between uh, the parliament and the presidency and, and, and too much power uh, are in the end of one guy. We can decide we go to war uh, or, or whatever. And, and so we have to, what we, we, are, we are calling for is for a thief republic uh, where we will have more rights because we, we do think that there are, there are still rights to, to win on a lot of levels and also we could change, we should change the institution because when the thief republic was, was started, it was back in 19, uh, back in 1975, no, 57, I don't know, uh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, at the time where it was, a, it was an entirely different society, it was, uh, most of the population was living in, in rural areas. They were like, uh, uh, women had, had, uh, didn't have the same rights uh, as they have, didn't gain the same economic power. There's, so, there's been so many changes in, in the way we are as a people, uh, in the institutions. Uh, and so we need to, 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 to shape institutions that reflect who we are and our core values now. Uh, it doesn't mean we have to erase the, 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 the past, but we have to take the best of the past and now, you know, uh, and I think it's, it's a very exciting process for me, for, for me to give, especially when we, when we, when we real, I mean, if, we ask, if we, everybody agrees that there is a democratic crisis, uh, that people are uh, abstaining to, to vote and there's a lot of discontent about the political classes and, and, the, and the media and stuff. So there needs to be something rather than lecturing people or like scapegoating them and okay, there's a crisis, how do we resolve it? By, by rebuilding uh, our, our society, our institution and, and redefining together our core values. So, so that's one of the, the third axis of our platform, which is this democratic, uh, um, this democratic refoundation. And I think within this, one of the measures we have is uh, the recall process 
uh, which is called what it was one of the demand in the yellow vest movement. It means that uh, after maybe one or two years uh, in in the in a in a in a term in a in a elected official term, we can recall them, uh, and it's a way also to to hold them accountable to call us as an elected official, and, and we, we advocate for this to happen on local level, but also on national level, and, uh, and if we keep a presidential system, uh, the president should be recalled, and it happen, I mean, it, it exists in, in some US states, uh, in Switzerland, in, in, in other places, and I think that those kind of, uh, of tool, could, democratic tool, could help, you know, people, citizens to, to be more active into the political you know, institution and for elected officials to be more aware that people are watching and, uh, and to, be, to, be, to actually do what they say they are doing or else facing being recalled. Uh, I think that was one of the propos proposals we, we put forward inside the constitution, new constitution process we are advocating for. And a lot of people actually agree with that and, and and demanded it during the Yellow Vest movement. Um, just quickly, I think that for um, non-French activists in the room, it's a really important point to think about this, the, uh, this like restructuring of the Republic, right? Because the executive branch in France yeah. has a lot more unchecked power. For example, the French president has a lot more unchecked power in France than say even the American president has in the US. Mm. Um, I saw a question back there, if yeah. it's still. Great. Uh, after what you said on the Socialist Party, the Communists, and the Greens, would you say that the Mélenchon is the only true left-wing candidate? Mm -hmm. I mean, what would you say to those who vote too right? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, obviously I'm biased because I'm a spokesperson of the said candidate. Um, you know, I'm from the left. I'm from the radical left. I mean, the, the far left, even. Uh, I could say that. Um, and um, the movement, the, 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 the La France Insoumise, and now we, we, we organize this new uh, spaces, which, which is called the Popular Union, L'Union Populaire, which is um, a platform which uh, supports the candidacy, Jean-Luc Mélenchon candidacy, and which comprises of part of the people from La France Insoumise, but also uh, trade unionists uh, and member of NGOs and stuff like that, that we met during the past five years. We've built movements with them and they actually get convinced that they, they're needed to get involved into politics, in, poli in electoral politics with us. So I think it's, it's, I'm very proud and, and very honored that so many people uh, from the social social movement NGOs who are actually getting involved and want and campaign with us. So it's wider than La France Insoumise. But even when you think about La France Insoumise, um, we we never called ourselves like left us per se because what we said with that it it had become a toxic word because the Socialist Party was supposed to be the left government and they implemented right wing policies. And, uh, and Macron used to say he was both left and right and neither nor. So what we said was we should organize uh, around our platform, our program, which is really the, 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 the foundation of our movement. But in, we, we, within this program, you get all, the, all we took from the social movement, all we took of the working class uh, movement, all we took from uh, we got we we got inspired and 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 uh, and, uh, and put forward the demands of the uh, liberation movements and 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 stuff like that. So this is this is the left. This is the left legacy, I would say, and and very proudly um, stand on the shoulders of all the working class and left and and LGBT and uh, you know our side our. Uh, um, but but we were appealing to the people, and we had this kind of populist rhetoric. We call it with a lot of you know because populism also have been a, a word weaponized against us because of whatever. Anyway, but yeah, we 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 are. This is our legacy. The left is our legacy. But we wanted to uh, not you know. It's not about the brand. It's more about the content. That's what we argued. So branding ourselves on the left wasn't the way we, we thought we could build, but pushing, putting forward the ideas 
the proposition, the program uh, that is at its core, the left legacy, uh, and also renewed with the, the challenges of our, 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 our time, which is, I think, the challenge of our time, which is climate change, and, and how do we face it as, as a society? For, for us, it's very at the core of our program. Um, so I, that's what I, I think uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon's candidacy uh, represents. I think it's, it's supported by uh, green, green, green party members, it's supported by trade unionists, by uh, socialist party, you know, former socialist or actual socialist party members, uh, communist uh, people. So yeah, I think the, 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 this tradition, this legacy, uh, and, um, and, and, uh, and also, to, to also answer part of the question you, you, you asked before, um, we are the one who actually, the only one, and that, that, that was very problematic that there were so few of us, but we were the one to, uh, to, to vocally oppose Islamophobia in France and uh, police brutality. And one, one very uh, infamous uh, demonstration that happened in France last year was the, a police demonstration uh, by no the tr the trade unions uh, police trade union mm -hmm. who actually mm -hmm. demonstrated in front of the national assembly demanding actually demanding that um, a bill should be rewritten according to their demands and asking for the constitution to be dismantled I mean it was it was actual separatist rhetoric actual you know. F uh, Factionalist rhetorics, and every I mean the 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 own minister, uh, and every other um, spokesperson or or leaders of the right and the so-called left party went to this demonstration, and and joined the demonstration inside the National Assembly, uh, where you got actual far right. I mean, most of those police trade union organization are far right, we, we don't consider them, them as trade unions because they are like corporatist organization with the far right uh, discourse. And everybody went there. And we were the only parliamentary groups that said we won't take part in this and we oppose it. Uh, and and, and Jean-Luc Mélenchon has been the one opposing Eric Zemmour the most, you know, the most uh, strongly opposing him, uh, the, the, the being vocal about uh, about fighting Islamophobia, and I think that's a that's a big a big uh, um, reason why we got a lot of support uh, in working class areas for that because we were seen even people who, who are critical of of Jean Luc Mélenchon for whatever reason recognize that in those moments we were the ones standing for the Republic and for our French core values. You know, uh, um, so that was a very, I think those were very important moments. So to me, that's what this, this, this campaign is about, is about our legacy as a, as a left, as a repu even Republican, I would say that. I wouldn't have said that like 10 years ago or when, I, when, uh, when I, I started getting involved, but yeah, we were the one defending um, Parliamentary uh, democracy. When when Macron has been smashing it with with all the bill, and we were the one defending, you know, the laicity actually, uh, with the uh, when we opposed the separatist bill because it was very anti laicity. Anti laicity. This bill was very anti laicity against the 1905 law that set the separation between the state and the and 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 the church. And was the contrary of that, um, and we were the ones standing for that, uh, and, and we've been the ones standing for those those values, those principles. So yeah, that's that's um, it, you know I think it's broader than the left, but at the core, the values, the legacy is is the progressive one, is the working class, uh, and uh, and the emancipation um, movement. Uh, legacy that we, we, we want to 
to to make flourish to to be to be to be to be uh to be to be to win <laughs> at the next election okay so i see one question back here and then we'll come to phil in the front So I, I may part some of the, the analysis here, but I think there needs to be, to go deeper than that, because there's a bit, some, of course, there's no time to really go in details, but um, I would say first, um, the, 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 the left abandoned the working class when they turned right. I mean, that was what I said about the Socialist Party. I mean, they were in power, they got voted into power in order to oppose Sarkozy and the previous destruction of the social uh, security and stuff like that. And they implemented the right-wing policy. I mean, that's the actual uh, treason. That's what happened. Uh, and that's why I said when you talk about left, people think about Hollande or Valls, who are right-wing politicians. So that's the major issue because the the policies implemented by the so-called left government were actually neoliberal uh, with a bit of social, you know. So I would say that's the main thing. The second thing, which I, I disagree with the idea that the left actually abandoned the working class and then turned to minorities and stuff. I mean, if you think about the actual migrant, anti-migrant policies that have been implemented, uh, by the so-called left, the Socialist Party, the right wing, are the same. I mean, they targeted migrants. They demonized 
Muslim, French Muslim people from immigrant background. There's no, I mean, I know there's, there's a liberal discourse. To me, I make the difference between the left and the liberals and, and the liberal discourse that, you know, the ID and there was a, 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 a socialist party think tank called uh, Terra Nova, which actually theorized the idea that, actually they said that we should uh, disregard working class issue because because economically we are neoliberal, and then cater to some electoral base like the urban and stuff. But I think that the way they see the society, because to me, when you talk about the, the, the what is what is implied when you you separate those sectors of society is like the working class is white, male, and then the other are you know people of color, which is absolutely. I mean, there's nothing more false than that. I know we've been, there have been screening of um, my esteemed colleague, uh, Francois Ruffin's new movie called uh, Debout les Femmes, Get Up Women, uh, which show one of the most actual militant part of the working class right now in France, women, women of color, uh, and low working class women of color. Those are the work, that's the face of the working class right now. Not just that, of course, there's still white male industrial workers because industrial workers still exist. They are just on precarious status. The, what, what changed? It's not the fact that the working class is not the majority of the population. When you add employees with industrial worker, they're still the biggest socioeconomic class in society. The problem is, is that their, their, their status, their statuses, no, their, their status uh, had, had been weakened and they've been, you know, uh, disorganized in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the marketplace and stuff like that and casualization of work and all that. That's what happened. Um, but it's not like, it's not white working class versus, you know, uh, LGBT, um, uh, so CSP plus, I mean, uh, higher class, you know, people. To me, the working class is very multi-ethnic, is very female, uh, and those are the people we are talking to. If you think about the two, as I said, the two social movements, biggest social movement, the Yellow Vest movement, and the anti-pension reform, and also one which is more l less visible, but right before the outbreak of the COVID uh, pandemic. The, the biggest, long lasting, longest lasting movement was from healthcare workers, actually, emergency workers. They were on strike for months before the outbreak. And those people are like female, are very multi-ethnic. That's the working class right now. So yes, we failed them. I mean, we, if you, call yourself left and part of the left, even if we've, we've not been in power, we were not part of the Hollande government, we opposed the Hollande government at the time, but for people, it's, the, it's all the same. So we were part of being seen as the left that betrayed them. Uh, the other thing I want to, back to your remarks, uh, is the idea that the working class turned to the far right or the pen. I think it's partially true because the working class mostly turned to abstention. This is the biggest party of the working class, not the Communist Party anymore, nor, neither the far right, but the abstention. That's actually the, the, the obsession. Our main campaign obsession is to appeal to the millions, millions of working class people abstaining, not taking part in, in, into election right now, and more and more so. And, and the reason why they don't do that, not because they don't think it's important, but because they got betrayed. And they got betrayed again and again and again. So it's an, act, it's a, it's a, it's an active ex abstention. So yeah, so I, I agree with that, with you, with that we have to, 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 to re-engage those people into electoral politics, it, into, into not just first electoral politics, but in fighting back. Uh, and, and, and actually they don't need us to, to, to fight back. They do fight back. We have to be by their side when they fight back. And 
for instance, during the Yellow Vest movement, they were targeted, and in the media, the, the Yellow Vest movement was portrayed of, of being, you know, uh, uh, racist, anti-Semitic, and all, you know, the way they, the, 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 media, the petit bourgeois media establishment see, you know, the lower classes, and, and, and really, that was a campaign against the Yellow Vest movement, and we were, Really, we were the only one like standing with the Yellow Vest movement, even from the start when it was not very clear because it was a, it was a confused movement. I mean, it, it was not a pure revolutionary movement. There was a lot of uneven consciousness. There was a lot of, you know, and people who had voted for the far right and for Macron and for us. So it was very mixed. It was, yeah, it was a people's movement with all the unevenness that you get into people's movement. But we stood by them, we stood by them, and we defended because the core demands of the movement were progressive in nature, not by theory. They didn't theorize it, but the very start of the movement was about social justice, fiscal justice. They were portrayed as anti-environmental people because they oppose the rising of, of, of fuel, but they say that, that we, we we, we can't help using our cars. We would like to, everybody has realized that climate change is real, but we, are, we can't afford actually to fight it. So uh, yeah, it, it wasn't something theoretical, it was very something concrete. So, and this is why also the idea that on the white side you had the working class, on the, the, the other side you got uh, climate change activists and you know, the, the, the working class is not aware of climate change, and this is one of the stereotypes that they, they exist. It's completely false. When you see the Yellow Vest movement, when they got, they did research about that, and people say, yeah, of course, we are aware of climate change. We are the first one to be impacted by that on many levels, but just we can't afford it. And that we saw in, actual, in an actual uh, living uh, form, the very idea we had been advocating is, uh, there, I mean, the, the idea for environmental justice and climate justice and social justice go end, to end in end. And the actual, I mean, um, combination of, 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 of that idea, it's like the end of the world and the end of the month uh, have the same reason, the same people who cause them, and so the same responses. So it's in those movements that we can see how the dynamic, the, the progressive dynamic that can unite all those people population together. So that's what we've been trying actually to do over the past year. I don't say, I mean, we, we obviously, we didn't succeed yet because we would, you know, have won all the elections and, uh, but that's the, the challenge we, we are trying to, to, to win. For, for the next election, actually. Even if not, we won't have the majority first, but even if, if a small percentage of the people who are abstaining right now vote for us, we're, on, we're at the second round. It's like one or two, all we need is one of two percent of those working class people who have been enraged by Macron, who, who are disgusted by the polit politicians and, and works. If it, we only need one or two percent of them to be at the second round and then to possibly win the election. So that's the very people we are just like talking to uh, and, and trying to mobilize them and, and to, to get them back into the polls and back into, into voting and back into organizing because what we also say is that voting and winning this election will be the beginning because if we know if we do win and it's a possibility, it's not, of course we got all the odds are like against us, but there's this, this little space we can get inside. If we do that, we know that we, we, we have the entire system, which is already against us. And we're not even, you know, uh, the 17 of us with Jean-Luc Mélenchon at 10%, we are already the one who got the most media attacks and political attacks, even more than the far right. So we know what we're gonna face if we, if we manage to get, win the first round and the second round. And we need people to be organized and ready to, 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 to fight back the, the reactionary 
um, onslaught on our government or our majority if we win. So I would end by agreeing with what you say about who we, we, we should mobilize and who's the, 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 the major force in the society that can help us win and help change things. And, and yeah, we, we, that's very people we've been trying to be the spokesperson of when we were at the parliament and trying to, 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 to get back to fight, fighting the ele electoral fight we have ahead. Phil? I'd say I think that sums things up well. I don't need to ask that question. Okay. <laughs> right, does that also mean we're out of time, or? We've got as much time as we like. Well, well actually. We no, you have to. Be <laughs> I Daniel's been speaking all afternoon, so I don't know what's Yeah, there should be. That might be a good place to end it then. Yeah. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming, and thank you, Danielle uh, Obono, for speaking to us today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, something else I should mention is coming up, D-Link Internationals has our monthly KUFA. 